Guys, welcome back to the off garage here in sunny and super hot Australia. We have like 250 amps outside, but I have limited the battery charging to around 100 amps. We're at 55%, so I keep it easy today. Just topping up the battery a tiny bit, but it charged at 200 amps this morning already. So guys, in today's video, we want to have a look at the new JK Inverter BMS again. And um, even this seems to be a very straightforward task, I'm telling you right now. I have so many comments and so many emails and messages that people want me to show how to update the JK Inverter BMS with a newer firmware. I know I have shown this a couple of times in previous videos, but I haven't made a dedicated video how to do this. Sounds boring? Absolutely. Hey, stick around. I'm sure you will learn something. So I thought today is the day and I'll tell you a bit about these fireware updates on these um, BMSs. So um, let's get right into it. So to update the firmware on any JK Inverter BMS, you have to set the dip switches like this. First one is on, all the other ones are off. Then plug in a normal computer LAN cable into the RS485 1 or 2 port. See, I've plugged my one into the RS485 1 port. And make sure there is no other BMS attached, no slave, no master, nothing else. Just this one cable going to your computer. This is very important because if there is another BMS connected, you may prick your BMS while updating the firmware. And I'll show you this in the video right after this one here, how to recover a pricked JK Inverter BMS. Yeah, because this is also possible. So, and this LAN cable obviously goes into an RS485 2 USB adapter into your Windows computer. I'm not aware that JK is making any other software except for the Windows computer system. So there's no Linux and there's no Apple support. And you also cannot do the firmware updates from the mobile app needs to be from the computer software. So, and then where do you get the newest firmware updates from? Well, there are a few sources online you can go to. The most obvious is the JKBMS website, which is jkbms.net. And unfortunately, they are using a not secure website. They are only using HTTP, like in the 70s. But I'm not here to bash JK. This will come in a future video. So once you're on the website, you go to technical support and download software. And here you can see several firmware versions, 14.20 and 15.10 at this point of time, a PBS BMS update manual, which, and the inverter BMS host computer program. So you need to download this computer program as well, but be aware, this one is the old version. It is the 2.24 or something, or 2.4. And you also need to know which of these eight versions you need to download and flash your BMS with. Open the Bluetooth app on your mobile phone. Go into the battery you want to update like... So for this demonstration purposes, I have only connected the negative and the main positive of the battery to the BMS. And that's why it doesn't show us any cell voltages and no other values here. But for flashing the firmware, that's totally enough. So once you're connected with the Bluetooth app to your BMS, click on the three dots on the top right hand corner and go to about. Because this gives you the exact hardware model you have so in this case, it's the JK PB1A16S10P. And important here on the mobile app also, you can see you have a hardware version of 14.xA. This is the hardware version 14 of the JK BMS. Well, and as you can see from their website here, there is also a hardware version 15 out there. Again, who would have thought? Apparently, there are two different hardware versions on the market, a version 14 and a version 15. What the difference is, I don't know. There's nothing on their website, nothing in use, nothing in the FAQ, nothing under products. Linking anything to any hardware version. So whenever you order a JK BMS, especially the inverter BMS, you don't know what hardware version you're getting. Is the version 15 better than the version 14? We don't know. Is it an upgraded version to the version 14? Potentially, but we don't know. There's literally no information out there what the difference between hardware 14 and hardware 15 is. But you need to confirm if you have version 14 or 15. And then you click either on the firmware version 14.20 in this case, or if you have the hardware version 15 already, you click on the version 15.10 which is in fact exactly the same BMS, just another hardware version. So you need a different firmware version file for that. 
Isn't that lovely? And if you go ahead and download both files on your computer, the version 14 and version 15, and you have a look in your download folder now, you will be surprised that you cannot identify any of these files at all. So you don't know which one is the version 14 and which one is the version 15, because JK has decided to give them um, not so easy to remember file names. So totally stupid. But I'm not judging. I'm not judging here. Alternatively, you can also go to Andy's website, theoffcredgarage.com, scroll to the BMS section and click on the resource link. This gives you access to my Google Drive and under the JK BMS you will find the newest PC software, which is the 2.5 and also a folder called firmware. In here you find the version 14 and the hardware version 15 files you need for your BMS. So I have the version 14, I'm going in here and I want version 20 and I have the PB1A16S10PBMS. Right click, download and guess what? You now have a file which you can identify because, because it has the same file name as your BMS has. Hmm? How easy is that? So here for demonstration purposes I also download the version 15 file for the PBA116S10P Download. And now you will find a file which is called hardware 15 jk pb one s 16 s 10 p So you probably can identify the version 14 and the version 15 now. Okay, we are now starting the JK BMS monitor software. You have to select the right COM port for your RS485 to USB adapter, which is usually not COM number one. So select the virtual COM port, make sure your device ID sits on one. This is the same number as the dip switch has on the front of your panel and click on connect. This should now connect your computer software to your BMS and once you see all the data you're good to go. Here again you can click on about and it gives you all the information. The model number of your BMS, the hardware version of your BMS, either version 14 or 15 and also the current software version on the BMS. So once you have confirmed all these information again click on the three dots here in the software and click on upload fireware. Yeah, it is the um, it is the Feuerwehr, or in German, Feuerwehr. I'm not sure if they are called Firmware Fireware in China, but it is what it is. Click on Upload Fireware. So here you get prompted with selecting the right file for your BMS. So we go to our download folder, and we can select the right file for our version 14 of the BMS. I am going to select the hardware version 15 of the BMS. Just curious to see what's going on. You click on open and it says major version is not the same to connect the device. So it actually realizes that this firmware file does not match your hardware, thankfully. Um, let me just go back to my Google Drive and we also download an older version, probably. So this is version 12 of the firmware. And because this has the same file name, it just puts a one in bracket behind it. Uh, version 12 of this firmware. And I also want to go into the 14.20, which is the up to date version and download another firmware for a two amp active balancer, 150 amp BMS. So this is not my model, but I'm downloading this firmware as well. All right. So this is the 150 amp BMS. This is the version 12 of my BMS. And we just got back in the computer software click on the three dots and select the version 12. So this is an older firmware because the question was coming up, can you actually downgrade to an older firmware again? Because you have found another bug in the newer firmware, can you go back to an older one? Let's give it a try. Version 12. This is for my BMS. Open. It says minor version must not be larger than connected device. So you cannot downgrade your BMS once you are at version 14.19. I cannot go back to any older version. Unfortunately not. Can I flash my BMS with the wrong version? Yeah, this is for the 150 amp BMS. Open this one. It says device identifier is not the same as connected device. So it realizes again, this firmware file is not for your hardware. So you cannot upgrade it. So this is actually a pretty fail safe, very user friendly. It gives you all the information and you cannot do anything wrong. Basically, you can only upgrade to a newer version and only if the file matches your hardware version. So that's pretty good, JK. I wish um, all the other settings were monitored like this. 
Okay, finally, let's choose the correct version. Here we go. There's no yellow message anymore. It gives you the model number of your BMS again and the newer version you are going to flash onto your device. Yep. The build date and the build time, for whatever reason. And here is the only situation where we have a start updating button. So you click this button and then you wait. BMS then beeps a lot of times. I don't know why it keeps beeping. Okay, it beeped like 10 times or something or maybe even 11 times. Anyway, we uploaded the fireware successfully. We click on OK. We get out of this flash tool and we go back to about and now we can see we've got the version 14.20 on this BMS. Well, unfortunately, you cannot see any log files on their website either. So what is new in this firmware version? We don't know. Sometimes I'm lucky and JK is sending me these files via Messenger. And let's have a look in the version 19, I think it was. Yeah, so the firmware files of all four of their models come in a zip container. And it also contains a release log TXT file. And when we open this one, it gives us a bit of an idea what they have changed. But unfortunately, they don't bother to upload this to their website, so we don't know what kind of changes, uh, improvements, fixes they have made with 14.20. There's, there's no way to tell. So, and if you think the PBBMS update manual is the PBBMS update manual, uh, you're kind of wrong. Because this is the information I gave them and say, well, this is exactly the step-by-step -step procedure people need to follow if they have a pricked BMS. Yeah, But they have just called this document the JKPB series BMS firmware update manual, which is not. This is not the usual steps you have to follow if you do a normal firmware update. So obviously they didn't even read the manual I sent them. But if you go back to my Google Drive and go back into the firmware folder, you will find a JKBMS upgrade PDF. And this is actually the official document they should have uploaded to their website because they have mixed up the CAN and RJ45 port here on their diagram. So there is this official JKBMS document on my Google Drive as well. Okay guys, that's it for today. This was just a quick video to show you how to upgrade your JK Inverter BMS with the newest firmware, answering some frequently asked questions as well, and show you some of the pitfalls as well. So if you get stuck, this video should actually answer all your questions. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel. Donating cold beer to Andy in his hot garage. Thank you so much for all your financial support, making these hot and sweaty videos possible here. And until the next time, guys, when I show you how to recover your pricked JK Inverter BMS. Until then, guys, you stay cool, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. I made it.